Hi, welcome along to another video. This time I'm going to take a look at a recent article from the MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Technology Review. This article came out in March, a couple of months ago, and it is available via various sources, but seeing as it's a Technology Review MIT article, we'll get it from the source. The links are in the information section of this video, as usual thanks for watching. So in the climate change section, researchers launched a solar geoengineering test flight in the UK last fall, last autumn, so somewhere around August, September 2022. The experiment, largely designed to test equipment, took place despite deep concerns about the technology. So for those of you in the UK that haven't heard about this experiment, the people doing it have done nothing wrong. There is no legal requirement for you to be notified. Although some notifications are given and it's probably a good time to jog your memory to the experiment carried out by the University of Bath in Bristol where there was also no public notification until after the event. Then the information came out. So we're going to look at quite a bit of this article just because there's so much of interest in it well done mit oh there we go last september so september 22 researchers in the uk launched a high altitude weather balloon that released a few hundred grams of sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere a potential scientific first in the solar geoengineering field mit technology review has learned the stratospheric aerosol transport and nucleation or satan balloon systems were made from stock and hobbyist components with hardware costs that ran less than one thousand dollars around 850 uk pounds so we'll get into the satan thing in a bit the person that carried out the experiment andrew lockley an independent researcher previously affiliated with the university college london led the effort last fall and not sure why he is no longer affiliated with the University College London, but maybe we'll find out. So he was working with European Astrotech, a company that does engineering and design work for high altitude balloons and space propulsion systems. So the article continues, the UK efforts was not a test of or experiment in geoengineering itself, rather, the stated goal was to evaluate a low-cost, controllable, recoverable balloon system according to the details obtained by MIT Technology Review. Now, if they release sulphur dioxide, then it is a test of geoengineering. Simple as. Such a system could be used for small-scale geoengineering research efforts or perhaps for an eventual distributed geoengineering deployment involving numerous balloons. They have submitted a paper detailing the results of the effort to a journal, but it has not yet been published. Lockley, the experiment person, largely declined to discuss the matter ahead of publication, but he did express frustration that the scientific process was being circumvented. Leakers be damned, he wrote in an email to MIT Technology Review. I've tried to follow the straight and narrow path and wait for the judgment day of peer review, but it appears a colleague has been led astray by diabolical temptation. So this is where we kind of see, apart from it being called Satan, obviously, this is where we see who the person doing the experiment is. Even atheists will acknowledge that there is a big difference between being religiously institutionalised institutional religion and following a spiritual path or having faith and this person isn't speaking in their local bible class at their temple they're being interviewed and responding to the massachusetts institute of technology so there would be a way to speak leakers be damned religious terminology damned judgment day diabolical temptation these are all serious religious statements. Well, would you want this person carrying out geoengineering, even if you're you, even if you're for it? <laughs> Which, to be clear, I really am not, and I think most of you are watching this are not okay with all this stuff. 
The article continues with the words from the person carrying out the experiment. There's a special place in hell for those who leak their colleagues' work, tormented by ever-burning sulphur. But I have taken a vow of silence and can only confirm that our craft ascended to the heavens as intended. I only hope that this test plays a small part in offering mankind salvation from the hellish inferno of climate change. So the person is upset because the fact that this experiment took place without public notification etc was leaked. He is determined that there is a special place in hell for that person. Where we know the special place in hell is reserved for a much worse person than that. Hey. And in this special place of hell where this person was going would like to see their colleague, they will be tormented by ever burning sulphur. They have taken a vow of silence, religious speak, ascended to the heavens, offering mankind salvation, hellish inferno. European Astrotech didn't immediately respond to an inquiry from MIT. It's probably because they were running away very quickly. Okay, so if we uh, mention now about this thing, the special place in hell for the colleague, and they would be tormented by ever burning sulphur from the piece earlier, where we remind ourselves the information about the balloon, which carried along a basketball size payload balloon that contains some amount of sulphur dioxide. So the person has released a balloon, released sulphur dioxide, and there's a place in hell where there is burning sulphur. So this person, clearly a bit unhinged, who's doing this experiment. And also this sentence, offering mankind salvation. Most people of faith know that there's only one offering mankind salvation, and it's definitely not this guy. And it's clear from their words what's going on with this person. So that's the religion bit done with. We'll get back to the article now. So it seems there was also another experiment which was carried out in October 2021. So an earlier flight in October 2021 likely also released a trace amount of the gas in the stratosphere, although that could not be confirmed and the system was not recovered owing to a problem with onboard tech. And during the second flight, in September of 2022, the smaller payload balloon burst about 15 miles above Earth as it expanded amid declining atmospheric pressure, releasing around 400 grams of the gas into the stratosphere. That may be the first time that a measured gas payload was verifiably released in the stratosphere as part of a geoengineering related effort. Both balloons were released from a launch site in Buckinghamshire, England. So notifications then. In addition, the group obtained flight permits and submitted what's known as a notice to airmen to aviation authorities. In the UK, that's the Civil Aviation Authority, the CAA. And they ensure that aircraft pilots are aware of flight plans in the area. So this was the same with the University of Bath experiment a couple of years ago. The electric charge method via the drone. Bristol Airport was notified, as well as private landowners in the vicinity. So some people do get notified about this. If the CAA has been notified about this, that means the British government are fully aware of this. This can all be done without public notification because there is no legislation to say that they must notify the public. And for those of you that have followed this story as it steps up over the last couple of years, you will know that the backlash from the public stops these things going on. So that's why they don't inform the public, is because they know it, it will be stopped. So there is a couple of paragraphs on how it's just an innocuous experiment, like it didn't do anything, it wouldn't be a danger or anything. No, maybe that won't be. But when it's many balloons, as mentioned earlier, these things only escalate. Everything starts with a thought with one person and it just gets bigger and bigger. So the public engagement thing. Some are still concerned that the effort proceeded without broader public disclosures and engagement in advance. So a scholar from the American University who is, ha who is forming a non-profit focused on governance and justice issues in solar geoengineering fears there's a growing disregard in this space for the importance of research governance. 
that refers to a set of norms and standards concerning scientific merit and oversight of proposed experiments as well as public transparency and engagement. In the UK, the government was advised by MPs to introduce regulation in 2010. So a person from the American University, I'm really concerned about what the intent here is, she says. There's a sense of them having the moral high ground that there's a moral imperative to do this work. But, she says, forging ahead in this way is ethically dubious because it takes away any opportunity for others to weigh in on the scientific value, risks or appropriateness of the efforts before they happen. Talati adds that part of the intent seems to be provocation, perhaps to help break what some perceive to be a logjam or taboo holding up stratospheric research in this area. So if there's one thing you can take from that, Wherever you are, there is a logjam and a taboo about getting it done. Which means all those academics writing letters saying we don't like this, members of the public like ourselves that are like we don't agree with this, is creating a logjam. They're not getting to do what they want to do. David Keefe mentioned he would crop up. A Harvard scientist, strictly he's a University of Chicago scientist now, I think who has been working for years to move ahead with a small-scale stratospheric balloon research program, questioned both the scientific value of the effort and its usefulness in terms of technology development. As David Keefe is not happy with it, but that's because this guy is his competition. Simple. End of story. David Keefe is not going to speak positively about this person's experiment. Almost makes him sound on side with us because he's speaking out against it. This is not a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. No, it doesn't work sometimes. The reason he's speaking out against it is purely because he's doing the same thing in America. Simple. In an email, David Keefe noted that the researchers didn't attempt to monitor any effect it had on atmospheric chemistry, nor did the work present a feasible pathway to use this method for deployment at reasonable cost. He wrote. It's definitely good to get his opinion though, isn't it? See how he thinks about other people doing what he's doing. So David Keefe continued, so in some deep sense, while it's much more thought out, much less cowboy than Make Sunsets, I see it as similar. So he's referring to the Make Sunsets, one which Luke Eisman in America went over to Mexico, did his thing. So David Keefe sees Make Sunsets as being a real cowboy outfit and the one in the UK, or the two in the UK, are nearly cowboy outfits. And probably what we're all thinking anyway, this paragraph, when asked if being provocative might have been a partial goal of the effort, David Keefe said, you don't call something Satan if you're playing it straight. David Keefe is not playing it straight either. So whilst it's interesting to see how he thinks, That does not mean he's on side in any way, shape or form. Back to the article, Lockley, the UK experimenter, stressed that the effort was an engineering proof of concept test, not an environmentally perturbative experiment, and that they obtained the standard approvals for such flights. He said in an email, I'm unaware of any prior approval process which should have been followed but was not. You might think it's crazy that the UK government doesn't have laws It's good business, as far as the government is concerned. If it's good for business, then get on with it. It's just business. And marketing, of course. So a bit of history. Several earlier proposals to carry out research in the stratosphere have been halted or repeatedly delayed amid public criticism. Those include the SPICE experiment, which would have tested a balloon and hose stratospheric delivery system, but was halted in 2012. That was in the UK. That was in Norfolk, in an area near Fakenham. It got out a few days before it was going to happen, but it was going ahead and happening. Many of us contacted all the logical people to contact in the area, and it was cancelled. It turns out their excuse was that it was cancelled due to conflicts with patents. Before that was announced as the official reason, the reason given was that it was there was a problem with the financiers. But we all know it's due to what the public did. So there's more information on SPICE and Scopex on the website. 
there'll be a link somewhere in the information section for that under projects and it finishes up this paragraph with as well as the Harvard proposal being cancelled that Keith is involved with known as Scopex so it's the general thing currently is as long as the public know about it beforehand they seem to be stopped so you need to be quite aware for that so the UK spice experiment that was cancelled it was carried out in America a couple of years later I think 2015 something like that American viewers you can go and search for that so there's a bit more information to add to this NOAA the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has begun conducting stratospheric flights using balloons and more recently jets as part of a growing US geoengineering research program its stated intention is to conduct baseline measurements not to release any materials one hope behind the efforts is to create an early detection system that could be triggered if a nation or rogue actor moves forward with large-scale effort what we are saying has been going on for the last 25 years or more there's definitely been a large-scale deployment it's just if you choose to see it or not some more information scientists routinely conduct outdoor experiments without seeking upfront public permission when doing so doesn't present clear dangers to public health or the environment so there might be hidden dangers but you know you can do what you like without notifying the public when there aren't clear dangers doing a quick search for Andrew Lockley from the University of College London it's not often you come across someone who doesn't have a photo of themselves in some form online we've all got them Andrew doesn't his profiles still say he's affiliated with the University College London and that was that if you made it to the end thanks for watching it's definitely illuminating wasn't it look after yourselves take care see you next time